Will killer robots destroy you and your loved ones? That may sound like science fiction, but it's not. Stay tuned and I'll explain why. You're watching Savvy Life Strategies. I'm Lou Del Monte and I invite you to subscribe and click the notification bell to get more videos just like this. Now let's talk about killer robots and how they may threaten you and your loved ones. But first, let me give you a little bit about my background so that you can be sure to trust this information. I'm an author and I've written four books and I have a fifth one coming out this year. My third book, The Artificial Intelligence Revolution, became the number one bestseller on Amazon. And it was one of the first, if not the first, to say artificial intelligence could be dangerous. At that time, that concept was so foreign in the American and the world thinking that the editor said I was being an alarmist and the publisher said, no, you're fired. And they got a new editor and the book got published. It then became Amazon's number one bestseller. Following that, I wrote a new book on nanoweapons, the first of its kind ever, about this new class of weapons that's actually much smaller than the diameter of a human hair. That book also has become a bestseller and in fact has been published in other languages such as Japanese. Here's a copy of it in Japanese. That's right, I'm a high-tech weapons expert with over 30 years of experience. When I say killer robots could be a threat to you and your loved ones, it's based on sound research, and other experts, if you do a Google search, agree with that. You may ask, what other experts? Well, let's take a look at what some of the experts at the Global Catastrophic Risk Conference had to say back in 2008. First, understand that the events that most people think might render humanity extinct actually have a remote possibility of happening. For example, the, an asteroid impacting the Earth large enough to cause human extinction has only about a 1 in 50,000 shot of actually occurring. However, the experts at the University of Oxford at that conference gave a 19% chance of humanity's extinction in the 21st century. At the top of their list were molecular nanotechnology weapons. In other words, nanoweapons. And that's why I wrote the book. It's a dangerous technology and it needs to be understood by our policymakers and the public as well. That they gave a 5% probability tied for number one was super intelligence. In other words, artificial intelligence that's actually smarter than we are. And they gave that a 5% probability. Third on the list are wars, which they gave a 4% probability. And a distant fourth on the list was an engineered pandemic at a 2% probability. Another name for killer robots is autonomous weapons. And in the era of superintelligence and autonomous weapons, put them together and you have a 10% chance of destroying humanity in the 21st century. Is that scary? You bet it's scary. Now you know why I wrote my books. You may ask, why do we make such dangerous technologies? Well, technology itself is ethically neutral. It's not evil. For example, a gun can be used to harvest meat like our early forefathers did. However, in the wrong hands, it can be used unethically to take human lives. And that's a tragedy. You may think that killer robots or autonomous weapons are science fiction, but they're not. 
Here's an example. Consider the X-47B UCAS, that's Unmanned Combat Air Vehicle. That's designed for aircraft carrier-based operations in the U.S. Navy. It's a semi-autonomous weapon, but it was originally developed to be autonomous. However, because of all the concerns that surround autonomous weapons, the U.S. Navy decided to use it only in a semi-autonomous mode, which means that there's a human in the loop that makes the final decision regarding any taking of human lives. Other nations have no such policy. They are fielding fully autonomous weapons, which means that the weapon itself can make a decision with regard to taking human lives. Can you imagine that a weapon will actually decide whether you're going to live or die? The X-47B is just one of many examples that I give in my book. However, there are numerous autonomous and semi-autonomous weapons, and you can read about them in my books. Now, you may ask, why are we developing such robotic killer weapons? And that's a really good question. Well, it turns out that our most capable adversaries are catching up with us. We no longer have the sole providence of using nuclear weapons or the sole providence of using advanced integrated circuits. As a result, the U.S. had to resort to its third offset strategy. In 2014, under President Obama's administration, the U.S. announced its third offset strategy, and that was to include artificial intelligence, robotics, and miniaturization. Now, the word miniaturization doesn't sound dangerous. However, that's what my whole book about nanoweapons is about. It's about weapons with features the size smaller than the diameter of a human hair. The important thing about an offset strategy is that it has the capability as a technology to win a war if necessary, and more importantly, that it has the capability to deter a war in the first place. In summary, the United States plans to retain its military lead using its third offset strategy focused on artificial intelligence, robotic weapons, and nanoweapons. Well, that's it for this technology segment. If I've missed anything, tell me down below in the comments. If you have anything to add or would like to ask questions, I'll address them down in the comments. If you liked this video and found it informative, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and click the notification bell so you'll get more videos just like this one. Until we have a chance to talk again, stay savvy, live well.